بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم آئی ایم ڈاکٹر سائرا نذیر اینڈ ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس دا لیور ڈس آڈرس ان پریگنینسی سو فسٹ آف آل ایز وی آل نو دیٹ ان دا پریگنینسی دیر آر سم فزیولوجیکل چینجز دیٹ اکر ان دا باڈی آف اے پریگنینٹ لیڈی سو دیٹ اٹ کین کوپ اپ ود دا نیڈس آف دا پریگنینسی ود دا نیڈس آف دا فیٹس اور دا بیبی ان نارمل پریگنینسی دے پلازما والیوم ریزلٹس ان دا فال ان مینی سیرم مارکرس وی نو دیٹ دا پلازما والیوم انکریزز ان پریگنینسی اینڈ ایز اے ریزلٹ دے از اے ڈکریز ان دا البومن لیولس اینڈ وٹ ہیپنس ٹو دا الکلائن فاسفیٹیز اٹس ایکٹیویٹی از انکریزز ایز اٹ آلسو سیکریٹیڈ فرام دا پلیسنٹا اینڈ دا امائنو ٹرانسفریز دا ایلانین ٹرانس امائنو ٹرانسفریز اینڈ دا اسپارٹیڈ امائنو ٹرانسفریز دے آل ریمین تھرو آؤٹ دا پریگنینسی اینڈ وین ابنامیلیٹیز آر پریزنٹ دین فردر انویسٹیگیشن از نیڈیڈ ٹو بی ڈن and uh, what about uh, the different um, uh, imaging modalities of liver disease then ultrasound is the safest and uh, um, mri without contrast uh, can also be um, used if needed so um, in uh, liver diseases we will discuss uh, the viral hepatitis uh, which will include the hepatitis viral hepatitis a b c uh, d and e then we will uh, discuss the autoimmune hepatitis and uh, after that uh, we will uh, discuss the obstetric cholestasis and uh, the acute fatty liver of pregnancy and gallstones and the primary biliary cirrhosis so um, let's start uh, with the viral hepatitis Uh, the commonest cause of gender uh, jaundice in pregnancy uh, is viral hepatitis and it will include uh, it includes the hepatitis a b c d e and sometimes the uh, 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 hepatitis uh, which is due to the herpes simplex uh, uh, virus so uh, the clinical presentation of all these viruses is the same as uh, that of uh, in the non pregnant uh, patient uh, with the exception of hepatitis e and herpes simplex and what are these exceptions i will discuss it later on so now coming to the hepatitis e it uh, uh, occurs in uh, its incidence is around 1 uh, in 1000 uh, 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 and as we all know that the transmission is feco oral route and there is no chronic disease fetal transmission is uh, extremely rare in hepatitis a and its vaccination is safe in pregnancy now coming to the hepatitis b the acute hepatitis b it occurs in 1 in 1 uh, to 2 per 1000 pregnancies and uh, almost 1.5% uh, of pregnant women are uh, chronic carriers uh, the transmission is uh, mainly uh, it is transmitted through the blood but also in the other body fluids such as the saliva semen and vaginal fluid and uh, drug users are also at high risk the um, fetal transmission is um, it, uh, it is um, uh, common in uh, hepatitis b uh, infection and um, it is almost 20 to 30% and uh, mm, if uh, uh, 70% are uh, fetus infected if the acute hepatitis b acute hepatitis hepatitis b occurs in the third trimester and it also depends upon the presence of the antigens in the maternal uh, serum um, you can say uh, the, uh, it's proven that 85% of the babies born to mothers who are positive for the hepatitis e antigen uh, they will become hepatitis b carriers and subsequently become chronic carriers all however the mother to child transmission it is uh, almost 95% uh, uh, preventable if uh, uh, the vaccine and immunoglobulins are given to the baby at birth so uh, in the uh, women who are uh, who have uh, the hepatitis b either the chronic carriers they the immunoglobulins are given to the baby at birth to the neonate at birth and the vaccination hepatitis b vaccination is given at uh, uh, birth 
and then at uh, one month and uh, six months of age. So at birth, one month and six months of age. Basically, the passive immunoglobulin, it provides protection against any virus transmitted to the baby from the contact with blood during delivery and uh, it should be given immediately. And the active vaccine provides ongoing protection from subsequent uh, exposure. Now coming to the hepatitis C, uh, its prevalence is uh, 1 to 2 percent and uh, it also transmitted uh, uh, through the infected blood products and injection of drugs. 80 percent of the hepatitis uh, C are the chronic carriers and uh, fetal transmission is 5 to 10 percent. However, the vertical transmission, vertical transmission means from the mother to the baby. It is highest with the highest uh, uh, viral load. Means Jitna zada viral load hoga, utna zada risk of fetal transmission humai paas zada hoga. And we know that there is no vaccination for hepatitis C and uh, there is a uh, main question that uh, the mode of delivery and type of feeding. So we will counsel the mother for the breast feeding and um, we can say that mode of delivery and type of feeding, it do, do not represent significant risk factor for the mother to the child transmission. Now coming to the hepatitis uh, D, the, it is also called as Delta virus and uh, transmission is parental. Chronic disease occurs in 70 to 80% and uh, the fetal uh, transmission, some cases are reported uh, but uh, mostly rare. Vaccination is also safe in pregnancy in case of uh, the uh, hepatitis D. Then comes the hepatitis E. Transmission of hepatitis E is by the uh, fecal oral route and uh, chronic disease, no chronic disease, fetal transmission, no cases are reported and uh, no vaccination is uh, available. As I have discussed it uh, earlier that uh, uh, there are some exceptions in hepatitis E because uh, what is that uh, thing? that hepatitis E is more likely lead to the fulminant hepatic failure in pregnancy. So we can say that it is the most dangerous uh, hepatitis in uh, if occurs in pregnancy. It is more common in the primary gravida and in the uh, third trimester. And in underdeveloped countries, 20% of the women who are infected in the third trimester, they die of the fulminant hepatitis. So there is a 20 to 40% of mortality risk and sometimes in the hepatitis C, there is a need for uh, termination of the pregnancy to save the life of the mother. So now you know that that hepatitis E is the most uh, dangerous type of hepatitis that occurs in pregnancy. So complications, uh, complications of any type of hepatitis, there is a higher risk of uh, spontaneous miscarriage, then there is a risk of stillbirth, there is a risk of uh, reduced uh, fetal growth, yeah, restricted fetal growth and uh, then uh, there is a risk of preterm delivery and in the cases of hepatitis C, there is an increased risk of preterm rupture of membranes and gestational diabetes mellitus. And as I have said earlier that in the hepatitis E, there is a fulminant hepatic failure and uh, also there is a high perinatal mortality. Now comes to the autoimmune hepatitis. Uh, basically in the autoimmune hepatitis, it is characterized uh, by the hepatic parenchymal damage uh, which eventually will lead to cirrhosis. However, um, the course of hepatitis, um, autoimmune hepatitis, it is uh, variable. Uh, means uh, uh, there may be the normal, there may be the flares throughout gestation and postpartum period and according to that flares the treatment is provided. Uh, and how you are going to diagnose, there is a presence of anti-smooth muscle antibodies and anti-nuclear antibodies and uh, diagnosis, uh, definitive diagnosis is uh, on liver biopsy. However, in autoimmune hepatitis, there is a higher fetal loss rate which is uh, reported to be about 20% and how you are going to treat it, there is an immunosuppressive therapy uh, in which includes azothioprine with or without prednisolone. It should be continued according to the disease activity in the pregnancy. Now coming to the obstetric cholestasis. So in the obstetric cholestasis, 
we are going to discuss uh, the um, incidence, its incidence, its etiology, then how to diagnose is uh, di diagnose it, and what are the maternal and the fetal risks, and how are we going to manage it. When we talk about the incidence uh, um, of uh, intrahepatic cholestasis, there is um, geographical variability in its prevalence. It uh, affects approximately 1 in 140 women in the UK, uh, but the rates are higher in the South Asian population. And uh, risk factors or the geological fact factors uh, of uh, obstetric cholestasis, so it has a genetic component. The obstetric cholestasis, it has a genetic component and there is a sevenfold increase of developing the disease in Paris first degree relatives. So, 17 fold have us increase hota hai first degree relatives mein. Kyunke it has some genetic component. Then, um, the reproductive hormones that is the estrogens and progesterones, they impact the normal uh, pathways of uh, bile acid homeostasis and uh, that will result in the development of uh, the cholestasis. However, this uh, these reproductive hormones or this cause it may be more severe in those women who are genetically predisposed. Then there is a recurrence risk of obstetric cholestasis. Though so the woman which has a history of uh, uh, obstetric cholestasis in the previous pregnancy, they are at more risk to develop in the current pregnancy. And how is this going to um, present? What are the signs and symptoms? So the main, the main is the pruritus, pruritus without rash, and mostly it presents in the third trimester. However, there are some cases which we see in the early gestation, but mostly in the third trimester, 30 to 32 weeks ke baad. And uh, women uh, mostly complain of the dark urine. And um, approximately 25% of the women have pale stools, which is secondary to steatorrhea. The jaundice is, uh, however, relatively um, rare symptom. The jaundice is uncommon. This is uh, how to diagnose it. I will discuss it later on. But uh, we have to know the differential diagnosis and we have to exclude the other causes of uh, raised uh, uh, hepatic hormones liver home uh, in the serum. So, DD will include differential diagnosis include hepatitis A, B, C, cytomegalovirus, Epstein-Barr virus and autoimmune hepatitis and the presence of the gallstones. So, as I have said earlier that how to investigate it, we are going to investigate the measurement by the measurement of the bile, acid, uh, bile acids. The bile acids, this is the most useful test in the case of obstetric cholestasis. Then there is the uh, liver amino transferases, the ALT and AST, they increase two to four fold. And uh, the bilirubin is uh, not a definitive uh, uh, raised means that if you get a bilirubin, there are approximately 10% of the cases in which you can see there is an increased bilirubin. In the case of the severe disease, as uh, there is an abnormal coagulation uh, and there is a prolonged prothrombin time then uh, we can go for the ultrasound and uh, why the ultrasound to exclude the other causes of uh, cholestasis like the presence of gallstones and extra hepatic obstruction what are the uh, risks to the mother and uh, what are the risks to the baby so um, if we come to the uh, first discuss the fetal risks so, the adverse outcomes, they are direct relation to maternal serum. Means, jitna zada serum bile acids ki concentration zada hogi, utna zada risk hai baby ki in utero death ka. Utna zada risk hai baby ka ke wo distress mein jayega. To is liye hume uh, bile acid concentration ko humne monitor karna hota hai isko pregnancy mein. Taakhe hume pata chale ki kitna zada ho raha hai, utna zada humai pas risk hoga baby ko. So, there is a risk of pre- term labor, then there is a risk of uh, meconium stained amniotic fluid. Means that baby distress mein jata hai, meconium pass karta hai, to obstetric cholestasis mein, mostly meconium stained amniotic fluid hai. Then there is intrauterine death and early neonatal death. And maternal risks, maternal risk is that of the postpartum hemorrhage. Postpartum hemorrhage is the excessive bleeding uh, which occurs after delivery or ye kyun hota hai? we know that the liver is involved and we know that the clotting factors 
uh, are produced from the liver so they are compromised and there is a risk of PPH then there is an uh, I have uh, said earlier that the risk of recurrence in the next pregnancy so these are some of the maternal risks and the fetal risks now uh, how are we going to manage it so antenatal means during pregnancy intrapartum means during labor and postnatal means after delivery in the antenatal management we have to monitor the lfts liver function tests and bile acids i have said earlier ke bile acids jitne zyada honge utna adverse outcome hoga to hame isko monitor karna hai to ab symptomatic hamare paas treatment kaise aa jayegi hamare paas there is a rash there is uh, sorry there is a pruritus without rash so to relieve that we can apply some aqueous cream with menthol to relieve that pruritus then the urso deoxycholic acid therapy it is indicated for severe symptoms and what is the dose it is a 500 mg bd is considered safe and protective from the intrauterine death and uh, it improves the maternal pruritus and also improves the biochemical derangement that occur in the obstetric cholestasis and how it acts basically um, it's a, a bile salt that causes decreases the bile acids in circulation and um, some other so may, the main treatment is also the oxycholic acid and what are the other uh, treatments uh, sometimes the dexamethasone 12 mg once daily for 7 days uh, can be given in severe cases and uh, it may help in the improvement of the sim symptoms there are also the trials to use the other drugs like to cholestyramine and uh, adenosyl methionine but uh, Uh, the different studies does not uh, uh, come up uh, with the very effective uh, results and they did not improve the symptoms and biochemistry and also in the and what is the now these are all which uh, we um, learn up to this point is the antenatal management but it in includes the mother we are, are also dealing with the fetus the baby inside her so we know already we know know that there is a risk of intrauterine death and the fetal distress so we in the intrauterine period we are also going to monitor the fetus by the ultrasound by the doppler by the if needed by the ctg intrapartum means during delivery so um vitamin k 10 mg daily it reduces the risk of postpartum hemorrhage because i have said earlier that vitamin k dependent factors they are decreased due to decrease in intestinal absorption and steatorial lead to vitamin k deficiency then um delivery it should be considered between 37 to 38 weeks of pregnancy jab term pe pahunch jaye to there is a better ke hum usko induce karke baby ko deliver karwa de kyun deliver kara de hum kyun nahi 40 weeks tak jaane de rahe isliye kyunki hame pata hai ke intra uterine death baby ke in utero death ka risk hai hamare paas to once wo term pe pahunch jaye hame usko deliver karwana hai aur fetal surveillance means ke aapne fetus ko kaise monitor karna hai ctg aap karenge labor mein और थर्ड स्टेज जो होगा थर्ड स्टेज मींस कौन सा थर्ड स्टेज कौन सा होता है लेबर का द फ्रॉम डिलीवरी ऑफ प्लेसेंटा दैट इज द थर्ड स्टेज उसकी हमें एक्टिवली मैनेजमेंट करनी है एक्टिव मैनेजमेंट टू प्रिवेंट पोस्ट पार्टम हेमरेज देन वॉट इज द पोस्ट एडल मैनेजमेंट ये नहीं कि डिलीवर हो गया अब हमने मदर को बिल्कुल छोड़ देना है नहीं द वाइटामिन के शुड बी गिवन टू द न्यू नेट then careful monitoring of lfts uh, in obstetric cholestasis after pre, uh, delivery the liver fu function started to decline so we have to monitor then then avoid oral contraceptive pills 27% of the uh, women with the oc will develop pruritus with ocps however pop means the progesterone only pills can be tried then there is a counseling regarding recurrence of the obstetric cholestasis in next pregnancy so the woman should know beforehand that her next pregnancy may be a high risk pregnancy so she need to do a pre conception counseling that the counseling before pregnancy early booking and the uh, monitoring throughout pregnancy now if the clinical symptoms and biochemical abnormalities they persist after delivery and they are not going to come down then there is a need to refer the patient to the gastroenterologist or to the hepatologist uh if the symptoms persist after delivery now comes uh, to the another disease of um, liver disorder in pregnancy 
which is uh, the acute fatty liver of pregnancy so we will define it we will know its uh, incidence what are the etiology or the risk factors how this disease present how we can diagnose it and what are the uh, various maternal and the fetal risks and how we are going to manage it basically what is acute fatty liver pregnancy you have to know this thing that this is very dangerous this is it says it has a high mortality rate and uh, there is acute liver failure with reduced hepatic metabolic capacity in absence of other causes and it's not very common disease it's rare if we said rare so what's its incidence is its incidence is uh, almost it occurs in one in 7000 to um, one in 16000 pregnancies and uh, there is uh, 10 to 20% per risk of maternal mortality and 20 to 30% risk of uh, perinatal mortality as it's discussed in the different studies then it is more likely to occur in the first pregnancy and it is more likely to occur in the multiple pregnancies and the pregnancies which carry the male fetus it is more pronounced in that those cases at its etiology now comes to the etiology uh, the main etiology is uh, um, what is the key role basically the disorder of the fatty acid oxidation the fatty acid oxidation hai uska wo key role player play karta hai in the etiology of uh, acute fatty liver so there is a deficiency of yahan par aap dekhen there is a deficiency of enzyme लॉन्ग चेन हाइड्रोक्सी असाइल को इंजाइम ए डी हाइड्रोजनेज इसको हम एल चार्ड विद कहते हैं सो ये एक माइट्रोकॉन्ड्रियल दिस इज अ माइट्रोकॉन्ड्रियल कॉम्प्लेक्स एक है उसका ये पार्ट है सो इट इज अ पार्ट ऑफ इंजाइम कॉम्प्लेक्स दैट माइट्रोकॉन कंस्टिट्यूट द माइट्रोकॉन्ड्रियल ट्राई फंक्शनल प्रोटीन एंड वेयर इट इज लोकेटेड इट इज लोकेटेड इन द इन माइट्रोकॉन्ड्रियल मेम्ब्रेन एंड वट अकर्स बेसिकली this uh, it occurs that um, uh, there is accumulation of long chain hydroxyl acyl carnitines that will result in the cell toxicity it is an autosomal recessive condition so we can say ki agar to ye genetic disease hai then why it does not it uh, uh, present itself before pregnancy why in pregnancy because if there is a uh, uh, disorder of the l chart that it's uh, right from the birth of that uh, lady for that mother why it uh, is pronounced or why it uh, uh, present itself in pregnancy so um, you, uh, we should know this thing that um, although there is sufficient capacity in the non pregnant state but when a heterozygous mother it becomes pregnant her liver is required to metabolize fatty acids from the placenta as well as her own circulation and that increase metabolite load lead to fatty toxicity ab usse sirf apne fatty acids nahi karne usse jo placenta aur fetus ke wo bhi karne hain to it will result in the increase metabolite load and that will lead to hepatic toxicity its diagnosis is very challenging due to uh, because it has vague signs and symptoms however there is some uh, vague criteria is given uh, which is uh, known as foncier criteria for diagnosis and um, according to it the patient presents uh, with six or more symptoms of all the list which we are, i am going to discuss with you then we can say that there may be the uh, you can label it as the acute fatty liver of pregnancy but again i am saying these are all the vague signs and symptoms so the, the other causes are also be excluded and then we have to and we have to be very very um, careful because it is dangerous disease high m- m- mortality rate so there is an nausea there is anorexia then there is abdominal pain vomiting increased thirst increased urination then there is hepatic encephalopathy and the transaminases zlt st they are raised three to 10 times thousands mein chale jate hain then there is an elevated bilirubin level the sugar yes one more important point the sugar levels decrease there is hypoglycemia there is renal impairment with elevated urea and creatinine then ammonia there is elevated ammonia there is leukocytosis white cell count is increased and there is a coagulopathy and uh, coagulopathy means there is increased prothrombin time and there is an uh, um, activated activated partial thromboplastin time 
and uh, patients frequently exhibit disseminated intravascular coagulation then there is ascites or bright liver on the ultrasound and there is a um, microvascular steatosis uh, uh, in the liver biopsy so women who have six or more criteria in the absence of another cause are suffering from acute fatty liver of pregnancy as i have said the key to diagnose is the rapidity in the deterioration of liver function test and you have to diagnose it with from the acute viral hepatitis wilson's disease drug induced and the poisoning with acetaminophen the paracetamol overdose it can produce a clinical presentation that is hard to distinguish from acute fatty liver of pregnancy and uh, it should always be kept in mind uh, now one thing i want to discuss uh, the differential diagnosis with the help syndrome and acute fatty liver of pregnancy what is help help is the complication that occurs in the preeclampsia basically um, it is a h for hemolysis el for elevated liver enzymes and lp for low platelets and uh, they are uh, they are uh, picture is overlapping and uh, they may have uh, they there may also be overlap clinically and biochemically between uh, acute fatty liver pregnancy and preeclampsia and uh, 50% of the patients with acute fatty liver of pregnancy they will have eclampsia so how to uh, there is an overlapping picture and there are some points which will help us to uh, differentiate them then epigastric pain occurs in both the diseases hypertension as it is the in the help syndrome uh, which is uh, preeclampsia proteinuria it is also pronounced in help syndrome the liver enzymes the liver enzymes are more elevated in acute fatty liver of pregnancy they are elevated 3 to 10 times in acute fatty liver of pregnancy then hypoglycemia the sugar levels are reduced maine pehle bhi bataya it is uh, it occurs in acute fatty liver of pregnancy hyperuricemia in acute fatty liver dic more pronounced in acute fatty liver however it can occur in the help syndrome thrombocytopenia it is more pronounced in the help syndrome than in the aflp raised white cells more in the acute fatty liver of pregnancy then in the ultrasound in the help there may be no normal ultrasound or hematoma however in the acute fatty liver there may be steatosis and um, uh, then in the um, mostly the multiple pregnancy aflp and uh, male fetus 70% risk of the aflp maternal and fetal risk i have discussed earlier that there is a maternal mortality rate of 10 to 20% with the perinatal mortality rate of 10 to 30%. Management how we are going to management uh, manage pre pregnancy pre conception before pregnancy then during antenatal during pregnancy intra partum during labor and post natal after labor after delivery. प्री प्रेगनेंसी में क्या है कि अगर एक दफ़ा उसको हुआ है तो नेक्स्ट प्रेगनेंसी में रिस्क आता है तो हमने उसकी काउंसलिंग पहले अगर हमारे पास हिस्ट्री ऐसी है तो हम उसकी पहली काउंसलिंग करेंगे और उसको एज अ हाई रिस्क प्रेगनेंसी उसकी नेक्स्ट प्रेगनेंसी को लेके जाएंगे और लिवर फंक्शन टेस्ट वी विल ऑल्सो चेक बिफोर प्रेगनेंसी एज वेल ड्यूरिंग एंटीनेटल फर्स्ट देयर शुड बी मैनेज इट शुड बी मैनेज बाई मल्टी डिसिप्लिनरी टीम and uh, that will includes obstetricians then hepatologist and anesthetist the neonatologist and the intensive care team then biochemical and hematological monitoring and it is essential to monitor the inr um, and the other markers of coagulopathy kyunki coagulation defect ho jata hai to wo apne monitor karne hain then plasma glucose levels platelet creatinine liver function test results and arterial blood gases all should be monitored in the antenatal if there is an any problem in hypoglycemia then the blood sugar should be corrected coagulopathy should be corrected and fluid balance so these are maternal environment now the fetal fetal surveillance should be done with the ultrasound doppler or uh, ctg if needed how we are going to manage uh, in um, labor during delivery how we are going to manage acute fatty liver of pregnancy so the ultimate uh, management is uh, delivery of the baby aapne isme baby ko deliver hi karwana hai lekin ab hum mode of delivery kya hoga how we are going to deliver it will be decided according to severity of the maternal and fetal conditions 
क्यों बिकॉज बिजाइनर डिलीवरी इज बेटर दे इज ए कोगलोपैथी और पोस्टमार्टम हेमरेज तो अगर हम उसका सजेरियन विदाउट एनी रीजन करेंगे तो हमारे पास उसकी कोगुलेशन ऑलरेडी डिस्टर्ब है तो हम उसको ज़्यादा ब्लीड ब्लीडिंग हो सकती है सो बिजाइनर डिलीवरी इज बेटर बट इफ यू कैन से अगर हमें इंडक्शन ऑफ लेबर करते हैं हम उसके लेबर को स्टार्ट करने के लिए तो इट टेक्स लॉन्गर टाइम एंड समाइम्स Uh, prompt delivery immediate delivery can improve the maternal outcome so in that cases other mode of delivery like cesarean can be uh, uh, considered then regional anesthesia is contraindicated contraindicated due to coagulopathy however the guest uh, the general anesthesia it can worsen hepatic encephalopathy so both of these should be um, decided by the anesthetist as this is a high risk pregnancy so it should be uh, managed in the uh, uh, hdu throughout labor and delivery in the high dependency unit then the monitoring of uh, vital signs they should be checked better to start uh, put on the monitor blood sugar should be checked every 2 hours and correction should be ne uh, needed accordingly then the hormones uh, they should be checked every 6 hours and uh, the level of consciousness uh, 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 the uh, they should be assessed regularly for encephalopathy and uh, the monitoring of the features by continuous ctg and to correct the coagulopathy fresh frozen plasma may be needed And then once the baby is delivered then continue the icu management and continue to do the blood tests until they come to normal and until the mother is out of danger then you should watch for any wound hematoma for due to coagulopathy postpartum hemorrhage and the risk of sepsis then pediatric consultation for the newborns should be um, uh, given and there should be contraceptive advice because there is a risk of recurrence 15 to 20% in the future pregnancies and the women should be counseled for that thing and uh, the mothers who deliver an affected fetus they have a greater chance of uh, uh, recurrence isme ek baat ye aap logo ne dekhi ki for heterozygous mothers who do not have affected fetuses and uh, for others who do not have a fatty oxy acid oxidation disorder recurrence risk is lower now comes the gallstones the prevalence of the gallstones is 16% in the um, multiparous women and 8% in the nulliparous women so um, acha before starting gallstones um, let's uh, uh, revise what we have uh, what we did up till now we uh, have done the viral hepatitis the autoimmune hepatitis and uh, then after intrahepatic cholestasis and then the gall uh, now Uh, acute fatty liver of pregnancy and now the gallstones so let's start with the gallstones there is 16% in multiparous women and uh, prevalence is 8% in the nulliparous however uh, the uh, acute cholecystitis uh, it is less common and it occurs in around 0.5.1% of the pregnant वाई मतलब इसका रिस्क क्यों है गोस्ट्रोन्स का ज़्यादा प्रेगनेंसी में बिकॉज ऑफ द हॉर्मोन्स ऑफ द प्रेगनेंसी देर इज़ अ इंक्रीज लेवल ऑफ एस्ट्रोजें दैट विल लीड टू इंक्रीज कोलेस्ट्रॉल सिक्रीशन एंड दैट विल कॉज द सुपर सेचुरेशन ऑफ बाइल एंड द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ गोस्ट्रोन्स देन देर इज एन ऑल्सो इंक्रीज लेवल ऑफ प्रोजेस्ट्रॉन वॉट विल इट डू इट कॉज इज द डिक्रीज इंटेस्टिनल मोटिलिटी द स्टासिज एंड दैट विल लीड टू द इंक्रीज फॉर्मेशन ऑफ द गोल्ड्रोन्स हाउ यू आर गोइंग टू मैनेज इट हमें ये नहीं कि फ़ौरन जैसे हमने गॉल्स स्टोन देखे हमने सर्जरी कर दी नहीं कंजर्वेटिव मैनेजमेंट या मेडिकल मैनेजमेंट इज रिकमेंडेड स्पेशली फर्स्ट और थर्ड ट्रेमिस्टर में बिकॉज दे इज अ रिस्क ऑफ स्पॉन्चेनियस मिसकैरेज एंड फ्री टर्म लेबर इन दीज ट्रेमिस्टर्स फर्स्ट में और थर्ड में वी ट्राई टू नॉट टू गो फॉर एनी सर्जरी एंड ट्राई टू मैनेज इट कंजर्टिव कंजर्वेटिवली एंड बाई मीन्स ऑफ कंजर्वेटिव मैनेजमेंट इट इंक्लूड्स intravenous fluids and the electrolytes correction and then the bowel rest the pain management by analgesics and the use of broad spectrum antibiotics but there is uh, the relapse rates 40 to 90% are high during pregnancy and uh, surgical intervention uh, it may be warranted and uh, it is usually occur in the during the second trimester and may be considered by laparoscopically 
Now the primary biliary cirrhosis, what is primary biliary cirrhosis? It is basically an autoimmune disease and what will happen in it is a pro progressive destruction of intrahepatic bile ducts and it will lead to portal hypertension and hepatic failure. And um, in primary biliary cirrhosis, uh, there is a reduced fertility rate, there is increased risk of miscarriages and there is a worsening liver functions. And how we are going to uh, treat it uh, by giving the also deoxycholic acid uh, their, uh, their risk of post-operative flare. Now comes to the cirrhosis. It is very rare in pregnancy uh, because it is usually complication of older people and uh, also because um, it leads to the hormonal metabolic uh, changes that are associated with uh, ion ovulation. So in uh, ion ovulation occurs, the lady cannot get pregnant. And uh, also the women with cirrhosis, they are at high risk so they are advised to avoid pregnancy and uh, also we know that uh, bleeding in the uh, esophageal uh, pharesis has been reported in 25 percent of pregnant women with cirrhosis so in second trimester there is screening done for esophageal viruses Ab screening kaise karenge? by endoscopy so all pregnant women with cirrhosis, they should be screened using endoscopy from the second trimester. And there are the complicate other, uh, including the other than the esophageal viruses, there are also the complications which includes hepatic failure, the encephalopathy, jaundice, and malnutrition. The complications which I have discussed hepatic failure, jaundice, encephalopathy, DIC, malnutrition, and death. Thank you very much.